This episode of Inside the Architect and Designer Awards is sponsored by Design in Detail. For more than 15 years, Design in Detail has been the go-to resource for designers, offering an exclusive array of furniture, fabric, wall covering, lighting, and carpet. At the showroom in Maplewood, every corner is filled with inspiration. Design in Detail's commitment to excellence means they only carry the very best vendors in the industry, ensuring that every piece in the collection sparks your creativity. Whether you're designing a cozy corner or an entire room, let Design in Detail be your starting point. Visit designindetailstl.com to get started today. Today, I'm excited to welcome David Kent Richardson to Inside the Architect and Designer Awards mini-series. David, congratulations on your win in the commercial restaurant uh, space category this year. Thank you very much. David is the designer behind Katie's Pizza and Pasta in Ballpark Village. And I guess my first question for you, David, is... How did you meet Katie? I've known Katie since she was, for when she was very young. I, I she worked for her aunt Zoe Robinson at uh, Zoe Pan Asia in the Central West End on at the corner of Euclid and McPherson. And I had a store across the street, and I was in there all the time. And that's how I first met Katie. She was a very quiet, shy, bashful, pretty girl. <laughs> Yes, yes. Um, and so how, um, how did the two of you decide to work together on this project? That was her. She had things in motion and she called. I, had, I did a refresh on Katie's Pasta at, in Rock Hill. Oh. And that's been about, oh, I, it was, I think it was in 2019. It was right before the pandemic. And then she was into work. She was into Ballpark Village and I guess she felt she needed me. <laughs> it's it's nice to be needed. <laughs> yes, of course. And so this isn't your first restaurant design, no, obviously. No, um, tell me a little bit about the main differences uh, between designing for a restaurant and designing for a residence. One decision goes a long way. You have, like, picking out chairs and stuff. You pick out, you make the decision once, but you get 50 of them. And there's not as much tiny details and, and personal, but then everything has to, you, you have to think about takes a beating and kicks, keeps on ticking and just the use and wear and tear and movement of people. And, in, you know, like there, you'll notice something, oh, well, once the restaurant's full of people, no one will notice that or that that would be in the way. Or you have, you, you just, it's, it's a different perspective, that's for sure. If yes, <laughs> do you enjoy um, designing for yes, restaurants? Yes, I, I, I mean I've done quite a few, and I, I enjoy it very much. So um, obviously, the restaurant is in Ballpark Village, but you wanted to create a very upscale aesthetic. How did you balance the two so as not to veer too far into a sports bar look? On Katie's wish. Ta and Lee created a, a vestibule entrance, so to speak, with her crest and her hostess stand and uh, the revolving doors, which is a little bit sophisticated for a sports bar. And uh, her menu is elevated, so there was the mix of warm woods and black tabletops and setting on concrete floors. And you have to be prepared in a restaurant like that, especially in Bar Park Village, for for game day for spills and and people not acting really elevated you know and and yet she has elevated items on the menu and uh it was just just carefully choosing the surfaces and the textures so they would last and have appeal to them and and look good and the art helps so much i mean it's it's just amazing what a piece of art will do to a room but all designers know that Especially as crazy ones. <laughs> and so I'm curious what Katie expressed to you about the aesthetic for this particular restaurant. Well, her father's uh, collection of 
architectural antiques and garden antiques were forefront on her plate. And I think a little bit of the reason why she called me in to, to work with her because I play so much with people's collections of things. And that she was very, she wanted them very much part of, since he had passed away, she wanted, that's like him being with her is, and using her, his collection. And so that was very much on the forefront of putting the restaurant together and keeping that in mind. And nature, bringing nature into the space obviously plays a big role in that. Absolutely. Not only did she want to use his planter, but she very much likes plants. And Susan from Growing Green uh, came in and did a wonderful job in helping select. And then Josh Smith from uh, Workhorse cast planters with the big lion head in them. And it was a, the, the, the nature part was a team effort, but it was very, very important to Katie. Her, her personal house has big trees in it, and oh. all of her locations have big trees. She, she likes them a lot. I understand that the French doors dividing the restaurant from the private event space yes. are also from her father's the, collection. The painted ones are, are from her father's collection, and then the other, the pair, of the lucite ones on the either side were cast from the original pair, and the ones in the middle are the original. What would you say um, was one of the main challenges for you as the designer? Balancing the, the plants and the statuary and not in, 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 in making it stand out and, and displayed correctly and installing it. Oh, my God, that was work. Right, right. Um, and so I'd like to talk a little bit about some of the details in the restaurant. Um, at the entrance, there's a beautiful uh, tile floor. What can you tell me about the design and how wish- that came to be? Well, that Katie was very much involved in des- the design of that, and uh, my basic only thing that I really did with it after it was designed and the colors picked and all that was angled the way it was going to turn when you walked in the door to make sure at different angles it looked looked right. The wheat in it stands for the flour for the pasta oh, and the cool. pizza. Uh, the red bird in it is uh, ornament. Is stands for the Cardinals, of course, at Ballpark Village, but also her father visiting the the myth behind the Cardinal bird visiting, and and it's a peace sign, which was a big deal to her dad and a big deal to Katie. So there's a, there's a lot of uh, symbolism in that piece. It it means a lot to her. It's beautiful. And the art in the space is obviously very beautiful and very personal to Katie. Absolutely. Uh, Ted Collier, who did the, his signature big circles, and he did larger ones and bolder ones than he usually do, and they command the walls so so perfectly, and they command the room because the rooms are the room is big, and the images are big and bold and, and strong, as are the pieces by her mother Belinda Lee uh, behind the retail counter, and those are taken from ancient Italian maps and the. And once again, there's, it's very personal to the people that created them and very personal to Katie. And it is a 10,000 square foot space. How do you create that cozy, inviting atmosphere in such a large town? Alan Lee, the architects, divided the space and turned over to me a, a, I, I colored in the line. They gave me the lines and I colored in. And they did an excellent job on placing the bar and dividing the space so you don't really, it's not in segments, but it keeps it from being a mass tennis court or a, or a, right. a, a hockey field because it's huge. And yes. they divided the space really well. And one of those spaces is the pasta making bar, which is so cool and charming. What can you tell me about the materials that you used in there? Well, that was selected. I, I selected the tile and did the... Uh, the, the great for the all the tools and the pasta making tools and everything and the bar stools and the the countertop or the butcher block was Katie and the chef that's what they wanted and it just kind of fell into place together I mean it's a very handsome space you can even sit there and eat while they make pasta and they make all the pasta for all her locations at Ballpark Village. Oh, really? I didn't know yeah. that. And it is true if you if you go there you realize that I mean. 
people are working behind that counter, you know, for hours on end making that pasta. So it's very, obviously it's being used. Absolutely. They're very busy. Yes. Very busy. And then you have the pizza making oven space, and that's a wood burning oven. Yes, it is. And what materials did you use, and, and how did you come up with that uh, black and white color scheme? I don't know that there was ever anything else talked about. I, I mean, red would have been just too sports bar or too cardinal oriented and and. Even though it's in Ballpark Village, there was like a certain line we didn't want to cross with the restaurant. We wanted to be a little bit elevated from a sports pass situation. And the black just, I, I, I don't know, it just casual conversation between Katie and I. I it, it, it was, you know, I, I don't remember. Yeah, yeah. But there is that Uccello Russo um which basically what means, it means red bird in Italian. Oh, very cool. Very cool. And who did you work with um, for the chairs and the tables? Is there like a local connection at all? You want me to tell you the sources for them? That would be great. Believe it or not, the chairs are from Pottery Barn. Oh. When you're sourcing for a job or space that large, I mean, we had to have many chairs, and we wanted two styles, and we needed lots of uh, bar stools, and then the, the bar stools and the pasta room, and we had to balance that all together. And... They have to be durable, extremely durable, and they also need to be somewhat comfortable. And then, of course, I I said already there was so many. It was sourcing through different. I would have I would have my computer going, two iPads, and be oh my gosh, source to see if the people had enough and were they going to have enough. And uh, because you'd have to you'd have to buy the chairs before they'd let you know if there were enough. Oh my could gosh. fulfill your so it was and then I would constantly send I, like little mood boards so to speak I would photoshop and send Katie pictures of of what three or four chairs would look like all together and then she would text me back no yes Kate when Katie says no it's a hard no <laughs> there's no wiggle room then, no, right n- not when she says no if she's silent there's wiggle room <laughs> but if she says no it's an it's don't even bring it back up again I'm curious what your favorite design element is in the restaurant. I, I guess the, the the arrangement and the dividing of the planters and using the statue, the artichokes, and uh, I, I I mean I like it all. Yeah, it will. It is very very inviting. I mean the plants are beautiful. The planters are beautiful. That was so much fun going through. There were four. Uh, storage units of her father's and it was just packed with stuff and heavy stuff and we'd have to move them all out to get stuff and see and then then we brought a, a truck load and had them sitting out front of the restaurant and we would go that one no that one no and these three here and those three there and th- we would it was making them all work out. I guess if there was one thing I'm the proudest of it's because it, I just in the back of my head I, I worried and I would count and recount and space and respace and uh, it's not going to work. It's not going to work. It's not going to work. And then the day that it happened, it was just like, damn. <laughs> I'm sure that felt it, terrific. It was a lot of relief once all those play. And and you have to understand those things are so heavy. And it's not like you could go, oh, move that over six inches or move that in. It's like no, you had to. They had to go and be. And then the ones between the booze are drilled and steady so they won't tip over. See, that's another thing. Everything had to be made permanent so it wouldn't, because one of those things fall off. Major pain. Major, (laughs) major. David, for designers out there who might be thinking about entering the Architect and Designer Awards competition this year, what advice do you have for them? Photography is everything. Get a really good photographer. Um... And, and, and don't, don't be afraid to do it. Make yourself do it. If you're scared, oh, no, I, I can't, I can't, I, I won't place, I won't win, screw that. Just do it. Just, just load the pictures up and enter them in and just do it. Just, just as Katie's dad would say, do your thing. I love that. Well, thank you so much, David, for well, your time you. today. 
Inside the Architect and Designer Awards, sponsored by Design and Detail. Visit designandetailstl.com.